Hey everyone, before I begin, I wanna talk to you about our sponsor, Herbal Face Food. I've been talking about Herbal Face Food because I see such amazing results with my sunspots, with my puffiness, because it reduces the inflammation, like my puffy eyes when I wake up in the morning, or even like my double chin. I always feel like I wish I had a better jawline and I feel like it's coming back. My sunspots from laying out day after day after day as a child has caught up with me. I have sunspots galore and herbal face food has helped so much with reducing my wrinkles, cutting down on my puffiness in my face. I can't really describe it other than just there's this, the puff is gone because it's not plant-based, it's made out of pure plants. And so it helps so much with fine lines, wrinkles, melasma. I have psoriasis, I have dermatitis, like my skin is a mess. I know it's from stress and it's such a relief to have something that doesn't show all the stress on my face. So go to the link in the email or go to herbalfacefood.com and make sure you use the coupon code HARMONY20 at checkout to support the show. Now on to the episode. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 219, A Plus Relationships. Welcome to the Harmony in the Home podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Hutchison. I'm a counselor, a life coach, and most importantly, an imperfect mom doing this work right along with you. And my goal on our podcast is to go from chaos to calm, feel less frazzled and have more fun within your four walls to have more harmony in your home. Hey everyone. So I want to talk to you today about, you know how we always talk about the B minus parenting and how helpful and freeing that is for everybody? I want to kind of convey that and bring it into our relationships because when I'm meeting with the humans, usually the frustration comes from another human. And I almost wish that you could be a fly on my wall to hear the conversations that I have all day, every day with clients, friends, siblings, cousins, parents, aunts, uncles, And all of those people collectively have a difficult relationship in their life and they're spending 99.9% of their time thinking about that relationship. Even if that relationship is not one that is in their day-to-day life. So we talk about this a lot in the Saturn relationships, how we should give our emotional bandwidth in relation to where that person is in our Saturn Whether you spend time with them or you don't spend time with them, the emotional energy that you're using thinking about him or her is draining you, is exhausting you. So most of the time when something is draining us, we do other things to distract ourselves from thinking about said relationship. It could be your sister. It could be your brother. It could be your mother, your father your spouse, your ex-spouse, your ex from college, your best friend. Usually the topic of frustration is one of those relationships. And why is that? Because those people, those roles are closest to you in your Saturn, in your heart, in your day to day. And if you have cut someone out, Wherever you go, there you are. That hurt doesn't go away just because you cut that person out or you've created distance between you and the other person. What I want you to do is to not put so much pressure on that relationship that it has to be perfect and it has to be an A plus relationship. And if it is not an A plus relationship, that means something is wrong with you. So many clients tell me, well, I feel like I'm a good person, but my mom doesn't like me, or my dad doesn't like me, or I came from an abusive stepfather. So I think I'm a good person, but then this person in my mind, how can I be a good person if they didn't think so too? How can I let go of all the messaging that they said to me when I was younger? And so we spend our whole lives with that person on our shoulder, chiming and chirping in our ear. And what we always talk about on this podcast is that is a reflection of how they felt about themselves at the time. Now, it could be a current relationship that you're dealing with, or the chirping and the chatting could be from things you heard when you were seven or 17 years old. 
that stuff never goes away. When I ask on Facebook, what is something a teacher told you that has impacted you in a negative way? And the specifics on those comments show that when we're young and we're impressionable, what other people say to us matters because we take it as factual. And we are gaslit into thinking what other people thought about themselves was what was true about ourselves. The other day we were going to the vet because I had to drop something off and Grady was in the back seat and he said, why are we going to the vet? I said, oh, I have to, we have to go pick up Tucker, our new puppy. He stayed there a, a couple nights and I boarded him there. And Grady was like, wait, I just was playing with him a little bit ago. I'm like, no, we're going to pick him up. He's been bored there for a couple nights. And he's like, but I thought I was playing with him last night. And I was like, no, I don't think so. Completely gaslighting him on purpose as a joke, but he went with it. And I could tell he was in between that schism of what he knew to be true was on one side of the seesaw. But then what I was saying as his mom was on the other side of the seesaw. So he was teetering and tottering back and forth trying to figure out what was true because he remembered playing with Tucker just 20 minutes prior. And so I kept going and I kept going. He's like, oh, and finally he said, okay, if you say so. And I was like, Grady, you got to listen to your own gut. You got to trust your own intuition. You got to trust your own voice, that inner voice inside of you. That mom was joking around and he is pretty gullible. You have to always remember that that voice, you cannot be gaslit by your parents. And I was trying to explain what gaslighting was. And he's like, isn't that lying? It, I said, it is lying to a point, but we were bullying at the time when we were having this discussion later on. Cause with kids, you can't talk about all of this at once. It just kind of happens in little segments. And later on we were bowling and he's like, this gaslighting thing, that's just lying. That was his bottom line. And I was like, yeah, that's very true. But it also goes a step further because you start believing the lie. It's not like saying the sky is pink. Because you're going to look up and know that when you're younger, you might not doubt that. But at 12 years old, it's like us being at the bowling alley. We're playing on the dark side right now. And I tell you over and over and over, it's very bright over here. Even though we're playing in the dark, it was like glow bowling. And so if I keep telling you that over and over and over, and you're not confident in your own inner voice, you will start to believe me. Now that's a silly example. But that's what happens when we're gaslit as kids to believe something to be true, but it's actually what someone else felt true about themselves projected onto you. And so when you step into emotional adulthood, you realize, oh, and then you have empathy and compassion for the little girl or the little boy inside of you who took that as factual, gaslit yourself and continued on. And then somehow along the way, turn that gaslighting lie into a fact. So I'm here to remind you and reassure you that you do not have to have A plus relationships with all of your closest people in your Saturn. It's okay to have B minus relationships with yourself, with your kids, with your spouse, with your brother, with your sister, with your mother, with your father, with your ex, with the heartbreak from college, from your colleagues, from your boss. It's okay because the relationship you have with someone else has to do with your thinking about that someone else. That does not mean you need to gaslight yourself into knowing and thinking that the abusive mother or the abusive father or the alcoholic brother is a good contributing energy to have in your force field. Even if you spend time with them at family, event, at family events and barbecues, that way they don't have so much emotional power over you. And they're not draining you to your core and pulling you away from your stronger relationships. Because not everyone's a match. Not everyone clicks. Just because you share DNA with someone does not mean they get to trump the line. Everyone has their own want match. And just because it's not a want match doesn't mean something's wrong with you. Because a lot of times clients will hear from their family, but it's your mom, but it's your dad, but you only have one sister, but you only have one brother. And clients are like, well, wait a minute. They called me the B word. Why is that an okay thing to do? Because I wouldn't let a neighbor do that or a colleague do that or a friend do that. So it's okay to have a fractured 
or less than perfect relationship with the people in your force field, in your Saturn. And nothing has gone wrong because guess what? They have their own force field and they have their own Saturn. They are here to teach you where you need to grow, just like you are in their lives to teach them where they need to grow. Sometimes they'll pick up what you're putting down. Most of the time they won't. Just as sometimes we'll pick up what they're putting down, but most of the time we won't. Because we're in ego, we're in fear, we're in imperfectionism, where we're trying to be perfect, trying to have that perfect relationship with all the people. And just because a relationship ends, and ends meaning you don't have contact anymore, doesn't mean you have to throw the baby out with the bathwater and that the relationship was a failure. It just means that the relationship completed its circle of lessons. You got the lessons, just like the Facts of Life theme song. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the Facts of Life. So from every relationship, if we're not shooting for perfectionism, and it's so freeing in parenting, it's also very freeing in being a spouse. It's also very freeing in being a co-parent with an ex, with your mom, with your dad, with your sister, with your brother, with your best friend, with your colleagues, with your boss. Remember, we're not all or nothing. We're not all or nothing good and we're all not all or nothing bad. Just like the people in your life, they're not all or good nothing and they're not all or good bad. You have free will, they have free will. When we shoot for B minus, then we don't need perfectionism. And then we take the pressure off their shoulders to be perfect as well. Just because the relationship ends or there's distance in the relationship doesn't mean that it has failed and it doesn't mean that you have failed. It doesn't mean the other person has failed either. It just means you're not a want match anymore. And so instead of giving all that emotional bandwidth and all that emotional energy to the fractured DF relationships, what happens is you spend all of your time and all of your, you spend all of the gas in your emotional tank on fractured relationships. And then what happens is the AB relationships start to suffer and they don't even know why because they sense a distance within you. It's kind of like Sean T when he was trying to build his classes at the gym. He's one of my favorite trainers ever and he's completely changed my life. And so when he was first starting, he went to all these classes of how to get more clients, how to get more people in his class, how to have a waiting list. And he said the reason why he had a waiting list was not because he was waiting for the waiting list. It was because the nine people that showed up, he poured everything he had into those nine people and they gave right back. It was a reciprocal relationship. And so then those nine people went and told their nine friends. This was an amazing experience that I had. Then all of a sudden there's 18, then there's 27, then there's a waiting list. That happened because he loved on the ones that showed up versus the ones that didn't show up. And a lot of times we're spending so much of our time thinking about the fractured relationships versus the favored relationships that are staring at us right in our face, begging for connection. Most of the time that unconditional love comes from our kids, but sometimes we get so distracted by the hurting that we miss out on the gifts right before us. So when you take the pressure off your shoulders And you don't want perfection in all your relationships. You don't want A plus. You want B minus in all the things. That means your relationship with yourself. What happens is you will project that out out onto your loved ones. They will feel it and they will reciprocate it. And if they don't, that's okay too. Because they have their free will just like you do. And when you take that pressure off your shoulders, you take the pressure off all the shoulders in your four walls and you'll have more harmony in your home. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, mamas, thanks for listening. If you had any ahas, clicks, or those lightning bolt moments while listening, you have to check out my free parenting boot camp where we take all of this to the next level, and we try to create even more awakenings for ourselves so that we can connect more with our kids and never yell at them again. You can sign up at www.coachingkelly.com. And if you really want to fill up my love cup, send me an email of what your aha was, what your click was, what was that lightning bolt moment while you were listening. I want nothing more in life than for you to have harmony in your home 
and to learn how to be an imperfect mom like me, which allows your kids to be imperfect too, each and every day. Thanks for listening.